Did you know that your home may be making you sad? And no, it's not because of any ugly or outdated furniture. Your interior design can actually greatly impact your mood. So I'm gonna share a few tips today on how you can improve your space. Before I do that though, I do wanna say thanks to Talkiatry for sponsoring today's video, but let's start chatting. Now, as I've already said, this is not about ugly furniture or outdated furniture making you sad, though those things can sometimes make me feel sad. I'm actually talking about true things that can impact your mental health that you may not know about. The first the reason why your home may be making you feel sad is that you have too many work items and screens in the bedroom. In an ideal world, I would tell absolutely everyone, no work materials in the bedroom. It is very hard to rest and relax when you're thinking about that email someone sent at 11.59 um, p.m. or you're thinking about that meeting tomorrow. It is so much easier to rest and relax when those things are out of sight and out of mind. Now, the solution to that is to not bring work materials into the bedroom. And that is easier said than done, especially if you live in a smaller space. So what I want you to start doing, if that is the case for you, if you have to bring work into the bedroom just because that's where your office is, in your home, I want you to do some things to visually divide your bedroom from your office space. That could be as simple as using lighting to segment the space, rugs, an accent wall, a room divider. Do something that visually denotes to you, that visually signals to you, okay, this area is for work and this area is for me time. You have to have that separation just for your general well-being. This isn't just about office materials. This is also about screens in general because they're lighting up and they're engaging. Now, this doesn't apply to everyone, okay, but I will say this. This. If you are on your phone watching something really exhilarating at nighttime, say you're watching Jumanji, it's a lot harder to fall asleep than if you're falling asleep without a screen in front of your face and perhaps a book instead, right? So the screens can cause us just to be a little bit too excited, a little bit too exhilarated in a space that again is supposed to pr promote rest and relaxation. So you may want to eliminate those if you're just feeling a little bit too energetic before bedtime. The next reason why your home may be making you feel sad is that you are obscuring the natural light. Natural light is something that we all need. We all need natural light because obviously light has a lot to do with how we feel. Just think about when it is nice and sunny outside, there's a smile on your face, you wanna get outdoors. And when it's gloomy, and it's gloomy a lot here in Pittsburgh, for too many days in a row, you maybe start to feel a little bit sad or you're just not as excited because there isn't something wonderful to look at outside. So natural light is very beneficial to us. And again, I'm not breaking down any of the science of this or any of that, I'm just saying these are just the human experiences that we all share. So with that being said, if you're obscuring the natural light, you're doing yourself a disservice. One way people are obscuring natural light is that they're just hanging their curtains incorrectly. If you're hanging your curtains way too low and way too narrow, you're actually obscuring more of the window. So of course you're getting the decorative accent from the curtains, but you're actually eliminating the function of the window. So an easy way to fix that is just to hang your curtains high and wide. You hear me say this all the time. You wanna hang your curtains as close to the ceiling as possible or truly as close to the ceiling as you can afford because curtains are way too expensive, but you don't want them just sitting on the window frame. You want them high and you also want them wider than the window frame actually so if you can get them 8 to 12 inches wider than the window that would be ideal again I know that can be a little bit more expensive so tweak what you already have in a way that you can to save money but this will be really fruitful because you will not be obscuring that natural light you'll actually be able to take advantage of it the next solution is to use a paint color that is more reflective so paint colors actually have a number called its LRV number and it basically tells you how reflective a paint is the lighter the paint color, the more reflective it tends to be. That's just how it works on the scale. Now, of course, there are lots of intricacies when it comes to paint, and we can do a whole video on this, so let me know down in the comments if that's something that you're interested in, but it tends to work that when you have a lighter paint color, it is more reflective, and therefore the natural light bounces off of it more, and therefore it helps the space feel brighter, and you can enjoy that natural light a little bit more. Again, it's a little bit more nuanced than that, but that is a tip that you can use if you're struggling with natural light in your space. Another way to better take advantage of the natural light is to be strategic with your mirror placement. Now I've talked about this before, but mirrors reflect whatever is opposite them, right? That is the purpose of a mirror and we love them for that. So if you put a mirror opposite a window, it's going to reflect all that natural light coming out of the window and therefore it is going to display even more window, right? I just explained how a mirror worked, but it was useful for the sake of this video. So this will actually help amplify the natural light that you have and that is why we love mirrors. The same thing actually goes with glass furniture as well. Like I know that not everyone loves to use glass, but of course, when 
one light hits glass, it reflects the light, and then we see all nice beautiful sprinkles of light. So that is also something to take into consideration too if you want to amplify the natural light in your home. And last but certainly not least, you can compensate for your lack of natural light with artificial light. You should be layering light throughout your home. I talk about this all the time. You should have ceiling lights, you should have puck lights, you should have chandeliers, you should have accent lights, you should have table lights, you should have LED light strips, you should have all of the lights. Your house should look like Saturday Night Fever, like you're at the disco. That's how many lights you should have in your home. Very important to have artificial lighting even when we do have natural lighting because the sun does go down. It goes down every single day. That is just the way the world works. So we do want to supplement with artificial lighting as well and this should really help. And again, in your own space, if you're struggling a little bit with light um, and you're not feeling like you're getting enough daylight, use a smart light bulb. They actually do have settings that do emulate natural light. So you can actually get the, the essence of natural light without actually having to have the sun out or windows. As we move through today's video, I hope you can see the importance of considering your mental health when designing your home. Your mental health should be a priority when it comes to interior design and all of the time too. Unfortunately, 60% of Americans with diagnosable mental illnesses go untreated each year, partly due to the fact that it can be so difficult to find a psychiatrist that actually takes your insurance. That is why I'm so excited to talk to you today about Talkiatry. Talkiatry is a virtual mental health service with 300 plus psychiatrists that take insurance. Getting started with Talkiatry is super simple. First, you need to take their online assessment. It takes about 15 minutes. Then you're matched up with a psychiatrist that meets your needs, fits your schedule, and takes your insurance. Then you can have your first appointment in days. Psychiatry is also all about flexible scheduling. So you can have your appointment in between meetings or during your lunch break, whatever works for you. If you've been struggling with your mental health, give Talkiatry a try. Head to Talkiatry.com and see if Talkiatry will work for you. You can actually find the link to Talkiatry in my description box. The next reason why your home may be making you feel sad is that you don't know how to use color in your space. Now I just did an entire video on color, so click here to go check it out. But colors are so powerful because colors actually elicit certain emotions. So let me just break it down really simply. There are warm colors and there are cool colors. Warm colors are colors like red and orange and yellow and cool colors are colors like blue, green and purple, right? One of them has a blue undertone and one of them has a yellow undertone. Um, so those are just kind of the basics of warm and cool colors. Cool colors tend to be a lot more relaxing colors. When you think about spas or um, beach houses or places where you go there to be relaxed, you tend to have cool colors. Then you tend to have really energizing red and yellow and orange and vibrant colors in spaces where you want to be really energetic, where you want there to be a promotion of creativity. Things about kids classrooms and classrooms in general. We have a lot of those colors to really energize them and get them excited. So all of these colors are really powerful and you need to use warm colors and cool colors in different places because they all elicit different emotions. So you don't want to paint your bedroom bright yellow. Um, yellow may be the most beautiful color on the planet but you are going to be just too hyper in your bedroom. Again, we want the bedroom to be a place where we're relaxing. So that's where we're going to tend to do the whites, the blues, the greens, the lighter colors, the softer colors, the more relaxing colors. But in the spaces like our basement, right, where we like to pay our instruments or something like that, we're going to have more vibrant colors. In the rooms where we're having conversations, where we're entertaining, maybe our sitting rooms, we'll have more vibrant colors, right, to promote that conversation. You have to be really strategic with how you use colors because they do really impact the mood in a space. And you can actually go online and look at how each color impacts your mood. There's a lot of data on this that I think you might be interested in. Now, the next reason why your home may be making you feel sad is that you chose a design style that doesn't work with your personality. Now, this one again is super nuanced and it totally depends on who you are, but you need to think about how you live and your preferences when you're choosing a design style. You can find something very beautiful, but not be able to live with it. Let me use myself as an example. I love the way maximalist spaces look. I think they look absolutely incredible. I grew up in a maximalist home. My grandmother is all about the maximalism. But for me personally, I know that I can find clutter very overwhelming and I feel that I need to clean it all the time to maintain the perfect maximalist look. And I just know that that design style causes me more stress than it's worth. So I don't live like that. Instead, I've chosen a contemporary design style or a modern design style that I still do enjoy, that I do find to be more aesthetically pleasing, but just kind of works well with who I am as a person. I've chosen something that is non-stress and something that I do in joy and that's very important when it comes to choosing design style. I always like to tell people, my clients, everyone that you can like 
a design style and you may not be able to live with it. So when you're selecting design style, just think about all of the work that goes into curating this space, um, how long it takes, how costly it is, what it's like to maintain it. Those are things you need to take into consideration before selecting your design style. The next reason why your home may be making you feel sad is that your space lacks personality because it's all neutral. I know, I know, I know. I, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but all neutral interiors aren't always the right way. Neutral interiors are trending a big time online right now, and rightfully so. We're really enjoying the beige, the all white, all of this and all of that, but it lacks personality. There are no pictures on the wall. There are no colors. Um, there's no visual interest. We're not using the colors in the ways that we spoke about earlier to get that energetic recharge, to feel inspired or anything like that. Everything looks sort of bland and bland works for a lot of people. Bland works for me, but for some people, that is just no way to live. So you might want to abandon the all neutrals. You can experiment with color and color not be, you know, a dominating thing in your home. Having a colorful home doesn't mean you need to paint your walls rainbow. It can be as simple as integrating blue, um, having blue decorative accents, using lighting that is colored. Very simple changes like that can really improve the space. One of my favorite ways actually to add a little bit of color to a space is to just use plants, right? their natural colors. It's not like you're putting blue up on the wall or green up on the wall or anything like that. You're just using flowers and plants to add a little bit of greenery or pink or whatever color they come in and it's fleeting, right? Because they die. So if it's too much for you, you only have five days anyway and then you never have to do it ever again. Plus another benefit of plants is plants are actually purifying to the air and that's very good for you as well. Clean air just helps you live better and is better for your lungs. Another way obviously to add colors just through decorative accents. Do it on a smaller scale. You don't need to get colorful artwork or at paint the walls or paint the floors or paint your ceiling or paint your cabinets. Just do something simple and integrate color in a very subtle way. Then see if you like it. If you like it, keep adding more, but I think this will really help. We need to get rid of all the all neutral interiors because all neutral doesn't work for everybody. Okay, you guys, that is it for today's video. Those were a few reasons why your home may be making you feel sad. I gave you a few solutions though, so your home will not be making you feel sad for long. And remember that if you are interested in giving Talk Eye a Tree a try, just click the link down in my description box. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a beautiful day.